Hey, it's Henry. I'm on the move. I am uh, at about 3,200 feet of elevation, which is the elevation of the main part of Missoula. I'm about to go climb a mountain. Over there is the main trail. I'm gonna go up the steep way, just, you know, for fun. So I wanna to talk today about temperature. It's like 80 something degrees here right now. A lot of people have strong opinions about units of measure, temperature in particular. There's the Fahrenheit crowd, the Celsius crowd, Kelvin, Rankin if you're into that. You know, the main thing is that units of measure are really a kind of language. They exist to communicate with one another. And people will find, find the units and use the units that best suit their needs. So Celsius is often said to be kind of the most neutral scientific unit of measure. But in fact, Celsius is very human-centric, very Earth-centric. He uses water, the freezing and boiling pots of water, to define zero and 100. If we lived on a planet that had methane-based life, a methane cycle instead of water cycle, we might use the freezing and boiling points of methane. The Celsius scale is a centigrade scale based on, uh, based on the Earth. And we happen to live on the Earth, so it's really useful. But there's nothing special about Celsius. Look at those people floating down there. I bet it's a lot cooler down in that part of the world. We've reached the height of Glacial Lake Missoula, 4,200 feet, when a time when it was much colder in an ice age, this entire valley was filled with water up to where I'm standing right now. If that may seem hard to believe, well, it is. I can't imagine all of this being a big lake and probably a lot of snow and ice on the mountains. Temperature, it does a lot for us. So you may be asking, if Celsius is a human-centered scale, what is a good temperature scale to use? Or rather, what is the most kind of universal and natural temperature scale? Let's talk about how do you even set a temperature scale? You really need two points. You need a zero, and you need one other point that's not zero. That's it. Celsius uses water for both zero and for one other point, which happens to be 100. Calvin goes one step better. It sets zero at zero, the coldest temperature can get in the universe, which is, uh, which is absolute zero. Or at least it's the lowest energy. There's some uh, technicalities of whether or not you define temperature using energy or entropy. It still uses water for setting the scale. So Kelvin isn't perfect. He has half right if you want a natural system of units. Doesn't matter. If you like Kelvin, use it. Units, the whole idea is communication. So if you like it, somebody else you know uses that same units, understand it, go for it. Still got quite a ways to go. It's really hot out. Temperature. Almost there. Here's the windsock. And the view behind me is pretty good. I can't see it right now, but you can. Almost there. Come on, gold leader. Or should I say red leader? Seems to be wearing all red today. All right. Here we go. There's the Missoula Valley. Just imagine that cold, filled up with glacial ice water. <laughs> Somebody's really good at Photoshop. They could probably make it look like that. Maybe one of you will. All right, time to go down the other side. I got dinner to get to. So now that I'm on my way down and I've had some time to gather my thoughts, I realize that some people might wonder why I am a fan of the Fahrenheit system. I'm a scientist. And it has to do with the fact that unit systems are just ways of communicating with other people. The ways of saying what you mean and having them know what you mean. Just like language. You can make up words, they're gobbledygook. Words like Google or freebooting, they might end up 
you know, in common use and have a meeting. And, and so the reason that I like Fahrenheit is because regardless of how it was created, I think it's really nice to have a scale from zero to 100 that encompasses most of the temperatures that humans experience, like the weather. Because, you know, most of the world, where most of the people live, probably doesn't get below zero Fahrenheit that often, or above 100 Fahrenheit that often. Celsius, on the other hand, it's like minus 14 to 37. Like, what is that good for? It's really good for science. Really good if you're trying to communicate with people using a water-based system. If you want a non-human-centric or a non-water-centric temperature scale, you just need to remember that temperature is a measure, roughly, of the average kinetic energy. And the Boltzmann constant converts from a given energy to tell you what the temperature is. So if you decide that the Boltzmann constant is going to be units of one, so one whatever the energy is is one degree of your temperature scale, then all you have to do is pick your energy scale. So you could use an electron volt if you're using electrons, uh, but electrons aren't the only particles. Pretty much the most universal system of units of energy would be the Planck energy. Planck scale units only use uh, fundamental constants from the laws of physics. The strength of the electromagnetic interaction, the strength of gravity, that sort of thing. So you could pick the Planck energy as your energy scale, set the Boltzmann constant to one. One Planck energy would just be the same thing as one degree of Planck temperature. Of course, the Planck temperature isn't that useful to humans because it's something like 10 to the 30th Kelvin. But, you know, if you're trying to find a non-human-centric system of temperature, it's not surprising that it's not useful for, for humans. Thanks for watching. I'm Henry, and I will see you on the move.